Welcome to Before the Fame series over here at DJIceberg.com. My name is Santana, and it's nice to finally meet you. Um, I've been seeing you all over social media, doing so many different lives and interviews and stuff, and seeing you over on BET Jams and whatnot with your video and stuff. Like, you you everywhere right now. <laughs> right. Everywhere right now. Um, but yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. So you were born in Philly, right? Mm -hmm. And you were, but you were raised in Queens, New York. How did you make that transition from Philly to New York? I mean, it really wasn't a transition. I was there when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So my whole life is New York. Everything I know is New York. Um, okay. I had siblings that were still out there. I was back and forth just to see my siblings, but mm -hmm. everything is New York with me. It wasn't really a transition I had to make. <laughs> you just you just moved over here there right. basically right. I, did, I did all my school years out here elementary everything so how would you say your so did you ever like live in philly i lived there for a few years i came up here when i was about five so five. i don't know. <laughs> yeah. you probably don't even remember that much of philly exactly. lifestyle of what's not I mean, but, I don't care a few because I have siblings still out there, but mm -hmm. I don't really get in tune with everything that's happening. Right, right. Okay, so how would you say? How would you say you incorporate, you know, those two places into your music? Even though you're so so New York, you know, how do you incorporate into your music the style and the sound? Um, I feel like I have my own style, my own sound. Um, I want to say it's from Queens or anything like that. It's just, mm -hmm. I'm into everything that goes on in the world. I try to use everything and put it into my music. Right. Okay. So, I remember seeing something about during your teen years before you trying to discover that you was going to be a rapper. You know, you used to write poetry and you would like rap it over beats. Were you surprised at the fact that you know, like, did you shock yourself when you would just like discovered that maybe rapping could be a career for you? Um, I was writing poetry at 13. At around mm -hmm. 16, I started rapping and putting it on beats. Um, yeah, I started doing ciphers and stuff in school. And mm -hmm. when I realized that it was easy for me to write, that's mm -hmm. when I realized like, dang, this is really something I'm good at because it was so easy. Right. I just, I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize I was so good. Mm-hmm. So, so you I say you're doing ciphers? Uh, yeah, ciphers. You're doing at a young age. Those <laughs> ciphers, they can be, they can be a little interesting. You know, like did you guys do it at school? You know, at the lunch table, beating on the, uh, beating on the cafeteria table, and everybody like go around <laughs> the game. <laughs> in the um, room. we was all over. Uh -huh. It was doing everywhere. I remember mean, those days. Those days were like that's when life was just fun for us. Mm -hmm. I swear. <laughs> So let's talk about the, I know you're very big on female empowerment, right? Mm -hmm. And it's very, very big that we need to have this for female rappers, artists, singers, whatever, in the music industry. They put a lot on female artists. The right. industry does, everyone does. Why do you think that? Um, I just feel like, I don't know. I just don't like the comparison. They feel like females can't be as good as guys. For some right. reason, I don't know why, but that's definitely not true. So that's why I like to empower women, because we just as good as anybody else. Like, definitely. yeah, I don't know. It's just always been like that, though. And I'm just trying to, you know, break that whole <laughs> barrier down. <laughs> exactly. But I don't know. They just, it's just like that with everything, though, not just music. Anything mm -hmm. in the world, females, they feel like they can't do it like a guy. So... Yeah, I I definitely agree. Um, but you know, it's it's just very big that it feels that females in in general and whatever whatever work field you're in, you have to go harder than the males do to prove that you know we deserve to be here. Mm -hmm. We've been given the rights to be able to do a lot of things, and it's like we're still fighting for it. Right, right. So it's like. You know, what more do you want us to do? You guys, they kind of complain about you if you be too sexualized or whatnot. If you're talking about your own body, they and have a problem. The that's the thing. I feel like, you know, 
that's what I try to stop and try to change. Like, just let everybody know is to just not worry about what nobody else have to say. Just do you. And that's it. Like, you just can't be worried about everybody's going to talk. It doesn't matter what it is. They just always going to have something to say. You can never be perfect. So it's just like, why even bother to even care? Right. <laughs> so, I definitely agree. You got to be tough in this industry. <laughs> definitely. But I want to bring up another topic that's, that's really interesting to me in the industry. Um, sometimes they kind of sweep it up under the rug. What it deals with like colorism in music. You know, there have been a lot of times where, you know, the conversation of where brown skin and dark skin women do not get as much attention as a lighter skin woman will. It's difficult because it's like, you know, it is somewhat true. You know, uh, you don't really yeah, you don't really see that many dark skin, brown skin rappers or singers or anything like that. You know, they have a little spotlight and then it's like, boom, their career goes down here. You know, but in the beginning, it was like, it started out being that way. You know, so how do you feel about, you know, representing those brown skin and uh, dark skin women in the industry that is being empowered by this? Um, I just feel like you just always just have to make your, your sound, make it, I don't know, but I, I feel it, I see it, Dreezy, Tiara Wack, all these good artists that I feel like are great, they don't get the um attention they need, they don't get the recognition or none of that, and I do always feel like that's why. I do always speak on that. Mm -hmm. Um, That's just another topic. It's, it, that's just something, you know, people always try to act like they don't see, or it's not really going right. on. They want to speak on it, they try to tell them, oh no, get out of here, this, that, but we all know it's true. We all see it. That's just another whole nother conversation on how that could be, you know, changed. Yeah, definitely. I definitely agree. So let's go ahead and move forward into your music. You know, you have this song that's popping called Make Them Mad. Yeah. What was the production about behind it? Because I know you, I saw you wrote the song in like two hours and then you recorded it. Yeah. <laughs> how did you make that happen? Um... I, that was it was real early in the morning, so I had to gather my energy, get some energy. Um, I was in no hype mood or nothing. I had got a phone call. I was actually in a bad mood. I had got a phone call that kind of pissed me off, and then mm -hmm. I couldn't go back to sleep. It was like seven thirty in the morning, so I just got up and started writing. I was looking through instrumentals, um, found that one, and instantly the first line was like make them mad so, I don't know where it <laughs> from but after mm -hmm. that everything just flowed right into it and then that's what happened it was like an easy song to write it was an easy song right. yeah it's not <laughs> complicated it was <laughs> just like you know I mean your name is already karma come on now we already know the meaning behind that so you make them mad you already know what's coming next <laughs> But I right. definitely, I definitely love the song. Um, let's talk about the visual of it. What made you come up with that? You know, it looks very, very fun. It's like, dang, I should have been in the video. Somebody, <laughs> I must have missed like the call or something. <laughs> yeah, it was a really fun video. Um, I've been working on it for a while, trying to piece ideas together. Um, I did scenes for it last summer, like on the beach and stuff. And then mm -hmm. on the scene and stuff, I was doing the rest of the scenes like trying to find places where i can do stuff because it was very limited and we just put everything together like that me and my team we just decided mm -hmm. to you know put it together let's do it let's drop it right now is the perfect time everybody's paying attention and that's just happening. right but i think that's dope i think it was amazing it was a really dope visual like i said i think i missed a call <laughs> i think i did <laughs> Next video. <laughs> okay, bet. I'm going to hold you to that next video. I want to be in it. But moving on, still talking about Make Them Mad, you actually got a remix to it. Yeah. You know, how did you, how did you, uh, Chameleon, like, get that together, you know? Um, so my manager, DJ Mr. Famous, mm -hmm. if you guys know, he, um, he knows her. They're very, um, cool. He sent the song over to her. She heard it. She liked it instantly. She went to hop mm -hmm. on it. I never met her in person. We spoke on the phone. When she got in the studio to record her verse, 
Right. Called my manager. He called me. I heard it. It was fire. And then that's how it went. We spoke on the phone. Her energy was dope. And the song, her verse was fire. So everything, it just worked. So can we expect a video to this remix? You I, you actually can. <laughs> okay. I got to get that call. I got to make sure I'm on a flight to get there. <laughs> what do you, do you guys think you're going to do something different um, from your original song of it as far as like the remix? You know, you got to go harder. No, you know, the video here is already hard, but you know, you got to be like, we got to take it to the next level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely working on it, writing it down, jotting it down, put ideas together. Okay, cool. So, how big are you on artists who write their own material? Because I know you write all your all your <laughs> rhymes, all everything. You know, it's all you. If if like 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 your idol Nicki Minaj said, if Nicki Minaj <laughs> wrote it. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying. Being yeah. Too <laughs> So how big are you on that, you know? I'm very big on it. I am with me. I can't speak for anybody else. But with me, I don't like anybody to, you know, question my work. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's very disrespectful. Don't question me. You hear, I, I wrote it. Like, they always feel like, oh, you wrote that? You wrote that? Every time I listen to my hair and my stuff, they always have that question for some reason. And like we said before, it's called the female thing, of course. They don't expect that coming from you. They don't. It's just always like that. But if somebody else could carry a song, you know, somebody writes mm -hmm. them and they could make it their own and make it to what it needs to be, then that's dope too. But yeah. as far as me, I like to write. I love writing. I like to take to get noticed for everything I do. I've been like this since grade school, and that's just me. I can't speak on everybody else, though. But it's dope. Everybody that's, you know, able to carry a song. <laughs> yeah. I definitely agree with that. I definitely agree with that. So besides Nicki Minaj, um, who is like heavily influenced within your, your music and whatnot, um, who else are big influences um, to you? Um, Tupac. <laughs> Tupac is definitely one. I love him so much. Eve. Um, Lil Wayne. Drake. I feel like Drake is a genius. Like he always come out the perfect time. He knows when to drop stuff and he's always up to date with everything that's going on. Definitely. And yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, that lineup is pretty nice though. You know, <laughs> Tupac, Lil Wayne, Drake. They all give you three different vibes. Tupac, yeah. the poetic side of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then you got Drake. He got so many different accents I can't keep up with. So who knows what he's going to develop next. Then you got Wayne, like the down exactly. south side. You know, so it's like I, I like that. I like that. I did see that you were you were a fan of Rihanna as well. Could there yeah. could you see yourself working with her if she ever dropped music for us? Huh? <laughs> if she ever dropped music for us. <laughs> I mean, I love her music, but as far as me, I grew to love her because of her style. Mm -hmm. like, I feel like anything she put on, it just looks fire. And right. it doesn't matter what it is, she could wear anything, and it's just she just knows how to. And I I love her for that. I feel like. That remind me of myself, so that's why. Mm -hmm. I so you would say that like your style is pretty much influenced by Rihanna. Yeah, basically. I mean, because Rihanna can put on a paper bag and exactly. make it look like <laughs> make it look like I need to buy it, you know. <laughs> so how have you been staying creative during this crazy pandemic? Uh, I feel like I'm always thinking of ways and anything that comes uh, I come across in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of something. And I was traveling. I traveled to places that did open up and stuff like that. So I was able to do things as well. Mm -hmm. But as far as staying creative, I'm just always thinking of something. Watching movies, I'll get ideas. Stuff mm -hmm. that's happening outside, stuff that's happening on social media. It's a lot of ways you can, what things you can do to stay creative, like to keep in tune and just to stay up to date. Right. Just, yeah. I definitely agree. Speaking of social media and everything that's kind of been going on around the world, mm -hmm. you know, um, as far as like the Black Lives Matter movement and, you know, the verdict of Breonna Taylor, you know, as a Black woman, both of us Black women in America, you know, nobody really protects us.